everybody welcome to part two of week two <laughs> layout organization I wanted to start this off by first clarifying a couple of things that I noticed came up in the Victoria Marie discussion about me tossing some layouts so I want to clarify a few things about my process before we dig into the last part of this week so first and foremost to bring everybody up to speed I had been posting about my process um, throughout the week and I also posted about how I threw away some layouts and that will listed some pretty interesting discussion on the Victoria Marie board so thank you to everybody who contributed to that and shared your ideas and your thoughts behind that um, I know that tossing layout seems to be a hot button issue in the scrapbooking community and I kind of uh, sense that I would have a tiny bit of pushback from some of my group members or at least not pushback but um, some concern I think some of them thought <laughs> I lost my mind like Victoria what the hell are you doing throwing away layouts and trust me I get it I get it um, that's not everybody's jam and I certainly don't suggest or recommend um, in my own personal process you have to develop your own and I think I've underscored that a lot throughout the week that you have to design your own organization and purge criteria that is so so important because it's unique to you and how you scrapbook and also being open to the fact that that's going to change as you evolve as a scrapbooker years ago I kept all the layouts and what ended up happening is I had a bunch of layouts that either I liked or didn't like or didn't really tell a story and I decided probably about five years ago that I was no longer gonna scrapbook that way I was gonna scrapbook with purpose and then um, here comes design team work and I'm scrapbooking um, professionally because um, of course those layouts are used to help sell product and so the motivation is a little bit different but there are uh, three things that I want to clarify real quickly because I know I probably would get some of those questions from my YouTube viewers as well and I know many of you are also part of the Victoria Marie group and you follow me on Instagram and that type of thing so I think it's good so number one when I create a layout I don't set out to intentionally create a layout and then say you know what later down the road I'm gonna go ahead and throw this away um, that's not uh, that's not my style that's not my practice whenever I do a layout purge it's because I've had a lot of layouts just kind of sticking around and it provides me an opportunity to really look at those layouts and decide do I want to keep them redo them or let them go now if I make the decision to let them go as I mentioned in part one it's because either I don't like it or it doesn't serve a purpose for me anymore those are my two top reasons um, whether it's my scrapbooking life or other aspects of my life I decided that I am no longer gonna keep things around that don't serve a purpose for me when I'm sitting down to scrapbook I don't sit down with the intention of later throwing a layout away um, but I do give myself permission down the road if I'm going through and I'm looking through uh, layouts that I need to put in albums whether or not I want to keep that layout or not particularly if I made the layout for a project or a design team because sometimes those layouts aren't necessarily indicative of my storytelling journey they're just purely for artistic reasons and to uh, provide a demo for a class or to provide a selling component for a product um, for scrapbooking clubs or whatever that I'm involved in or design team assignment or guest designer uh, assignments that I'm involved in so um, I do not make it a practice to create layouts and then ultimately yes I'm gonna mark this as one I'm gonna throw away that's not that's not a practice of mine um, I also do not go through my old uh, albums and decide to toss um, layouts that I don't like I generally reserve that practice from when I'm going through layouts that I have yet to put in an album so I don't want to take up album space unnecessarily um, I have lots of evidence of my early scrapbooking and um, there's no need to redo those pages or anything like that um, they're gonna stay the way that they are again this differs from scrapbooker to scrapbooker I, I wholeheartedly agree if you have a layout that you want to change or an album you want to update then I say why not you know it's your album it's your story right you want to tell your story how you want to tell your story again it's individual to every person but I do not go through my old albums and be like I'm tossing 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 this I don't do that um, one because I don't have time <laughs> to do it honestly and two I do want evidence of my early scrapbooking so it can show an evolution of where I started to where I am now so that is not a general practice and lastly it is a different um, practice whenever you're doing this professionally I would say I average anywhere from 15 to 20 layouts per month particularly if I'm in production for a class because I do a lot of 
process videos for my classes or instructional process videos for my classes. I also do um, the content for the YouTube channel and then design team work and that type of thing. And what happens when you do this professionally is you end up with a lot of projects that you may or may not want to keep. Now, for some people, they may keep all of their design team projects or all of their whatever it is that they're doing, whether it's on the design team or if they work directly with the company, um, they keep their projects. I have in the past given away certain projects. So if I'm working on a mini album, I tend to give those away. In fact, I have several mini albums that I'm going to be gifting um, because I don't want them. Um, and I discovered them um, during week one when we were organizing our crafty spaces. And I told myself, I don't need these anymore. They serve their purpose. And so now I'm going to gift those. Those I would not throw away. Um, but again, a matter of personal preference. But a lot of my design team stuff, I don't make it with the intention of throwing it away. If in hindsight, I don't need it anymore, then I'll make a decision at that point. What I have discovered, what has helped a lot is it's hard to balance both the business creative part of it and the personal creative part of it because I'm creating all the time. And so what I try to do is if I have a design team assignment, I try to make that layout purposeful so that I so that it fits in with my storytelling journey versus just creating the layout just to sell the product. Okay, I do think that scrapbookers like to see those authentic layouts. And so I try to provide that as best as I can. Sometimes time is limited and I just need to get the layout done. And it may not be the most robust layout that I want in my scrapbooks. Not all of them are gonna be masterpieces. Um, but I do have to leverage how much I have because I literally only have so much space to store layouts. So um, I try to find a very distinct balance between the two and going forward, really focusing on even making those design team projects purposeful for me. So I don't feel compelled down the road to say, ah, I just made this just for show. I'm just gonna go ahead and toss it, deconstruct it, give it away or whatever. So. Anyway, I just want to clarify those three things so you don't think I'm completely off my rocker when I say I toss layouts because I do and simply because either I don't like it or has no relevance for me anymore. So. All right. So I wanted to clarify that as best as I could. If you have any questions, just post it down below. I'll be more than happy to answer that for you, whether it's about my personal process or if you have any questions with regards to how maybe you can change up your process to work for you again. I can't underscore this enough you are the captain of your ship so you decide how you want to organize your layouts how you want to purge your layouts do you want to toss them or whatever wherever you fall in that realm of layout organization just do you and remember that your process may change as you evolve as a scrapbooker so again if you have any questions just post it below all right let's finish out we all right so back at it today going to pull down one or two of these bins to see if i can get these layouts in some shape, form, or fashion. <laughs> There's so many of them. I am never doing this again. I promise, promise, that's my left hand. Imagine I'm holding up my right hand, that when I do a layout, it is going in an album because this is redunculous. So I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna try to knock it out and get it done and uh, call it a day. <laughs> So I'm tired of looking at them now. I'm not tired of looking at the layouts. I'm just tired of the process. <laughs> Alrighty. So at this point, I have filled up at least four and a half album albums. <laughs> albums. What's an album? <laughs> an album. I've run out of eight and a half by 11 page protectors. I've discovered that I need to buy more albums because the empty ones I had, I filled. And so I ordered some of these black leather bound um, albums from Recollections. Is this Recollections? I think it is Recollections. I can't remember. Anyway. So I ordered some more of these leather bound albums and some more eight and a half by 11 page protectors, mainly because I have two bins left that I need to empty out and put these layouts in albums. So this is all of 2016 with about three or four, maybe five layouts that um, either need to go into my albums that are all about me or I need to replace in Rennie's albums. Um, but other than that, all of this is 2016. This was empty, but I split 2016 between these two containers. And there are just maybe three layouts, maybe a little bit more for 2017. So when I get the new albums in, then I will label all the albums. Um, I'll probably relabel them volume one, two, three, four, and so forth. Get the ones set up for 2016. And then of course, consequently, 2017, that will go in that album. And I'll probably just keep maybe two years in each volume. I don't know. We'll just see how it looks. 2016 will probably end up being um, 
one probably will end up being two albums to be honest with you because there's a lot of layouts in there I did considerably more scrapbooking in 2016 because I started my business and this is why I like to purge layouts because I can almost guarantee that if I go back through these again there's probably some layouts in here that I probably don't want to keep but you know I've been through that process I probably won't repeat that process again I'll probably just go ahead and put them in the album and call it a day I just don't want albums filled with layouts that don't say anything. Um, so that's my biggest thing. Again, that's just one of my um, pet peeves. All right, so I've got an empty container here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my supply closet and I think I'm gonna call this process done. All right, so some final thoughts on this process before we end. First and foremost, be sure to set your own purge criteria as I have underscored many times in both part one and part two of this video. It is important that you create an organization system that works best for you and also be open to the fact that your organization system may change as your scrapbooking style changes. So be open to changes along the way. Also, get into a good habit of actually putting your layouts in your albums. That way you don't end up with stacks and stacks and stacks of layouts that take you hours to organize and sort through. And also, don't be afraid to let go of what does not work for you anymore. So whether it's a particular album style or a layout itself, whatever works or doesn't work, feel free to amend that so it works just for you, right? You have to be happy with your album system, not anybody else. All right, so I hope that you played along with this challenge. Make sure you go to the Victoria Marie Facebook group because that's where you'll post your before and after pictures. The pinned post, which is the first post that doesn't move on the Facebook page is a static post. That is where you will post your before and after pictures if you're playing along. I'll announce the winner of this challenge um, later on in the month uh, we still have another week one week left where we're going to talk about photo organization and so i'll be doing a brutal purge on some of my photos and i'll talk to you about that next week um so the link is posted below for the victoria marie group so make sure that you join us in order to play along and submit your entry to win a mystery uh scrappy prize okay that will be a organization mystery, mystery scrappy prize um let's see anything else i think that is it so join me next week where we'll be talking about photo organization getting rid of those duplicates does that scare you i'll see you next time